What is up everyone, Ken also known as Wiltshire here, and today I'm going to show you guys an alternative to the DS3 tool called Better DS3. Now the Better DS3 tool is a lot more safe than the DS3 tool, and allow me to explain. The DS3 tool can be classed as a Trojan horse, and the reason for this is that the DS3 tool requires you to use an internet connection, correct? Well, the reason behind that is because it communicates in an external server on the internet. Now this server at any time could send you malicious code anonymously and under the radar of your antivirus program. Now this is why I really don't like the DS3 tool anymore. So the developer Phil has opened my eyes to how harmful this program can be. So I'm here to show you guys a safer, better alternative to connecting your PlayStation 3 controller to your PC. So let's get into the interface of the better DS3. So in the program you'll see that I have connected my PlayStation 3 controller already on the left hand side of the program. Now I want to make a note that the program looks a lot better than the DS3 tool. The DS3 tool was just a cluttered mess with ads and it had a green background that really hurt my eyes. Now this is a lot cleaner and better laid out than the original DS3. I just wanted to point that out. So in the program you'll see on the right hand side that we have a battery state bar that's moving. Now this will show you the charge level of your controller. If it's plugged in it'll continuously stay moving until the controller has reached 100% charge level. Now if you're using Bluetooth that bar, that green bar will slowly deplete over time as the battery depletes as well. So we also have the options that the DS3 tool, the original one, offered us. So we can start the program minimized when we start Windows if we wish. We can also minimize it to tray when we minimize. And here's a really good feature that I always liked and I personally use it all the time because I usually leave my computer and my controller connected. So we have the option to power off our Bluetooth connected controllers after a certain amount of time that we specify. So say if you're going to the washroom and you take a really long time going to the washroom, uh, say more than five minutes, the controller will automatically shut itself off and save you power. And I really like that option. So I'm going to get into mapping the buttons for your controller. Now this is a little bit more customizable than the DS3 tool was. Here we can map any button we wish or any key that we wish to the controller. But uh, it's a little, a little complicated. I had a fair bit of issue um, mapping buttons myself, and I'm pretty good at this stuff. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So we're going to click the New button, and it'll bring down a drop menu with Direct Input and X Input. What you want to select is X Input because this will give you the most compatibility with uh, PC games on your computer. So I'm going to click X Input. And it'll bring up another window, and this will probably be a little intimidating to some of you. But I actually have been talking to the developer via email and have suggesting things have been just suggesting things rather for him to implement into the into the program. And I suggested that he make a button for people to click that automatically maps the buttons for you if in case you want to map your controller like an Xbox 360 controller. So um, just hit the Xbox 360 controller button and it maps all the buttons for you as they should be like. Now, if you're like me, and you'll notice that if you're playing Call of Duty on the PC and then you try on the PS3 that the R1 button is to shoot, but on the X button, the trigger is actually to shoot. So I really don't like that. I honestly like using the L1 and R1 buttons to aim and shoot, but you can change this. So we can change this by changing the L1, the left bumper, to left trigger half axis and the R1 to right trigger half axis. And this will swap the triggers so that R1 is practically R2 but it's thinking it's an Xbox controller so it's it's thinking a little differently so if we go down and if we try and find where is it here if we find the left analog stick or R3 or sorry L2 I'm not looking for that here we go analog L2 and analog R2 if we change those to the left and right bumper button we have now swapped so that L1 and R1 will be aim and shoot. And this is for all the PS3 guys out there that want that option. You may use that if you wish, but uh, that's how you set up your controller. So we also have the same options as we had in the DS3 tool. We have um, the customizing the LED. So we can choose to have the battery charge level on the LEDs itself, or we could choose to be player one like usual. We could also change the rumbleness like the the uh, the force of the rumble on here as well that's um, 
Now it's an old feature that was in the DS3 tool as well. As long as here, this is a little bit new, the analog to digital thresh thresholds, I recommend not touching these at all. Same with the uh, analog stick axis dead zones, don't touch them at all. They're, they're a pretty good set there if you have a, a pretty good controller that's not very worn out. Um, you may also vibrate test your controller, just like the old DS3 tool. So once we've set up everything, we can um, name our profile. So let's name it uh, test, for example. Now, we also have a new feature in the Better DS3 tool that allows us to automatically apply this profile to every single controller that we connect to our PC, which I really like. And so if we click that, it now will automatically apply this profile to me every time I plug in a PS3 controller. But I'm, I'm just going to check that off for now, and we're going to save the profile. So once we've saved the profile, you can go to this drop-down menu on the left beside the New button, and we'll go down and select the profile that we've created. So I created one with test in all caps and once we've selected that profile hit apply and your PS3 controller will now act as an Xbox 360 controller and is connected to your play, your your PC. So essentially it's the same thing as the DS3 tool but it, it's a lot more powerful and a lot more customizable than the DS3 tool. Also it's a lot safer so that's how you connect your PlayStation 3 controller using the better DS3. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. See you later, guys.